Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and people who identify as something other than any of those. Welcome. My name is Matt, and this is Hidden Light. And today, okay, so mm, typically I'm a brush stroke guy, right? On my platinum prints, I make platinum prints using a brush, not a glass rod, and. 99% of the time I choose to display the brush strokes on the paper. But 99% of the time I then choose to use a mat board and omit the brush strokes from the presentation of the print, if that makes any sense. Um, but what I wanted to do, I get a lot of people asking me, ah, oh, should I do brush strokes, should I not? I want to just show you what the same image, the same chemistry at the same time looks like with and without brush strokes. And then we'll kind of see like how you can present those, mat them, frame them, whatever, ever so slightly differently to see what that looks like. We're gonna use just a little baby print to kind of go through this, see what it looks like. And uh, then you'll know, brush strokes versus not. Yes? Beautiful. Um, we're at like close enough to humidity in here. I've got my negative, so let's just rock and roll. Let's just do it. We'll do it live. I gotta reach up here and trim out my negative. Whee! I did accidentally print this backwards. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna look great. It's a cute picture. Shot on my iPhone, actually. So, when I print a negative, I'm not sure if you can see this. Here's the image area. And then when I print it, there's a big black border <laughs> that we can choose to include. This black border will block UV light and will therefore make it so that you don't get brush stroke borders inside this area. So what I'm gonna do is take a sheet of eight by 10 paper I'll go over here so you can kind of see. And basically my black border goes pretty much bleed, full bleed on the paper. So I can coat anywhere in here and it will just not show the brush strokes, which is awesome. So I'm gonna get a little pencil and mark out my corners. And then I'm gonna like stick my pencil underneath there, find a corner. Oh no, I moved it. <laughs> oh, I moved it again. Kind of down here. So then my goal when I coat this is to get my brush strokes kind of as close to these as I can while being just past them. So that I know I get full image coverage without like going all the way to the bitter edge of the paper. So this is gonna be our clean border print. Then I'm gonna take this exact same negative, trim all the black off, and you'll just have the image area. And then we'll be able to see the brush strokes on the second print. So we'll mix up a little baby emulsion here. Um, we'll probably do the standard, you know, let's do pure palladium today. It's a little warmer. It's something I don't feature quite as often. Uh, and that's fun. Uh, a little ferric oxalate. See, eight by 10, I'm gonna do like, I don't know, 15 drops of each. This should be like more than enough. 12, 13, 14, 15. And then the palladium. 15. That's it. Gotta take off your bling bling when you're doing platinum so you don't accidentally touch metal to the emulsion. And you make sure to flick the water on your videographer's feet. Okay, here we go. It's kind of hard to see because I'm on a white mat board, but you'll get the idea. Ready? Okay, go. Ooh, yeah, drastic overcoat, which I love. This is a lot of chemistry on a small print. There's something wrong with this. Something wrong with that chemistry. That should not look like that. 
Stand by while I troubleshoot. Just making sure it's not inkjet paper. There's a texture to this we shouldn't see. These are different papers. This may even be an inkjet paper. This is the paper I want. The French paper. The good stuff. Uh, being dumb is hard, so is going fast. So don't mind me, I'm gonna go trim this down. You can actually get your lips wet and then just like nibble on the corner of a piece of coated paper or on film, or on super gelatin paper, and typically your lip will stick to the side of the paper that's designed to accept whatever it is you're doing. So if I take my inkjet paper here, which an inkjet pen on it, get my lips a little moist. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that on camera, but my lip sticks to the coating surface. Um, this doesn't have that. It could be Hannah Mule. It could be something really cursed happened to this sheet of paper. But the finish, the feel, it's very different. So we'll use it for grins, but I cut down more. Oh, look at that. So much better. This is 15 drops of each. I could probably have gotten away with 10 drops of each. I could probably take some of this chemistry and apply it to the next sheet of paper. This is really cursed. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. This one I'm not so worried about where the edge is and what it looks like because I'm aiming for cool hippie brush strokes. So I can just kind of go hog on this. This is our cursed paper. I don't know what it is, if it's inkjet paper, Hannah Mule, something that looks and feels very different. The coat's dried okay. Uh, let's try it. We got five minutes while this paper dries anyway, so see what happens. We'll just uh, stick it in the old UV. Here's my pencil. Good. Okay, so, woo, yeah, fuck yeah. Okay, so uh, maybe it's gonna be fine. Notice, notice uh, the borders are all not this black tone, which means they didn't get exposed to light and they should just wash out in the clearing bath. Hey, so far so good. There's a picture there. <laughs> oh, look at it. Like this bottom corner down here where it's getting transparent because this paper's not designed to be immersed in water. <laughs> but okay, there's an image there still. Let's see what happens. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Let's see if it washes out. That's gotta be in that solution here for 10 minutes. And if the paper just clumps into pieces, then we'll know that it was the wrong paper. <laughs> it definitely looks like something wrong and terrible is happening. Um, I have seen sections of Arsh do something similar to this, but never quite this aggressive. So it could be that it's fine. But I doubt it. <gasps> That's funny. Okay, let's go do, uh, let's, let's, let's do it nice. Uh, uh, so I'm keeping the black border on the negative on my reasonably clean bordered sheet. 
you know, like centered-ish. Close enough. minutes. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, this one should be better and less strange. I'm gonna leave this for a second. Now I have to go take the black borders off of this negative. So I'm gonna go trim this out real quick. Okay, so now that I've trimmed off the black borders, all of the exposed emulsion that you see here will turn black, and that'll be my hippie brushstroke borders on the final print. So I'll put this in, we'll bake it while we develop this. Boom. Now we develop this. You can see the borders are yellow, which is good, because they're gonna disappear. So uh, this paper, amazingly, still exists. This one we're gonna add in there, and over time, the next 10 minutes or so, this yellow should start to disappear. Get your finger out of there. And cute black borders. Look at those big, beautiful black borders. There you go. Wow, that shit got crooked too. I'll have to trim that later. They do read actually very differently with that much border on them. So you can see most of our border's gone on this one. Not quite gone, but getting there. So now, all we do is the uh, weight the clearing bath to finish, which will pull the rest of the iron and the yellow out of the borders on this, wash them down real quick, dry them up real quick, and we'll be able to see the difference. And I may trim this one, because I got it crooked, because that's how I am. Yeah. Definitely a difference in these two, which is kind of interesting. So that's it, basically. Uh, with the brush strokes, you can pretty much instantly tell that it's a handmade, hand coated, alt process print, right? It's like Van Dyke, Calotype, Platinum. It's kind of like what looks like this. So it's got to be one of very few handmade processes. The print with no fancy borders. Could be an inkjet on matte paper, could be piezography, could be platinum. It's kind of no way to tell. So if you're aiming for, say, subtlety, nice clean presentation, and you're like, that's it, that's all you care about, you don't care about if people know that it's a platinum print, great. If you need to be able to show someone that it's platinum, that it's handmade, that that it's special, aside from the fact that the photograph hopefully itself is special, the brush strokes can be a great way to, to go. And then all you have to do is get your mat board 
the mat over them when you do your frame design so that people don't have to see them. It, it looks like this because it's got a big white mat board around it, but underneath it's this. That's kind of my happy medium for presentation. Uh, it also does honestly make my life easier to be able to rough coat the paper like this and not worry so much about where my edges are. Uh, I think it looks cool. You can still sign it on the front in pencil and people will be able to see it. And then you have the option of either including or excluding as much of the black brushstroke shenanigans as you want. Yeah, that's the kind of with or without thing, I guess. Which one do you like better? Let us know in the comments down below. Or really ask any question or say anything in the comments below because, uh, you know, algorithms and stuff. We're a young channel, you know, we're still getting started. Uh, as soon as we hit a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna do a random giveaway and we'll give away a print, kinda like, actually a little bit bigger than this, of one of your images. Our subscribers. Uh, we're almost there, we're getting close. Last time I looked, we were in the 800s, so getting there. Anyway, that was a fun little print project. Probably the best advertisement for an Intrepid camera I've ever seen. Uh, see you in the next one.